Welcome, Kingdom Kids, to LM123 Sunday service. Uh, we're so excited to have you guys join us for another week. Can you believe it? It is already the last week of July. Where does the time go? I do not know. But Kingdom Kids, are you guys ready for worship? Meaning, have you gotten a drink of water, gone to the restroom, dressed in some nice Sunday clothes, and you know, put away all distractions and are sitting at a table or a desk? If you are, that's great. And so also don't forget your Bibles too and maybe something to write with to take notes. And so more than those things, putting away all distractions, let's put, uh, prepare our hearts for worship and let's open up in a word of prayer. And so let's pray from wherever you are right now. But before we do, I want to encourage you to please stand up from where you're at in your seat. So stand up because after prayer, we're going to go into a time of praise. And I do want to encourage you, Kingdom Kids, that, uh, you know, when you pray and when you praise too, it really moves God's heart. And God is so delighted, so happy to see you worshiping Him. And so uh, let's open up in a word of prayer. Let's close our eyes and I'll pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, so much, God, for giving us, Lord, the gift of today. We thank you, Lord, for the Lord's day and each and every day, Lord, that we get to worship you. And we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that even though we're not physically with each other right now, but, God, we thank you, Lord, that right here in this moment and in this time, that there are other kingdom kids and other kingdom family, families worshiping you all together, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to sing to you, to praise you. You, to worship you and to learn more about you. Would you open up our hearts, Lord, to just really take in all that you have for us today. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. You set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Everything I have, I owe it all to you. For everything you are and all you do, Lord, I could write a book, fill every single page with a million.
Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. I have learned that I can go to Jesus. He lifts me up whenever I need it. Whoa, oh.
All right, Kingdom Kids, I hope you guys had a great time of praising our Lord together with your hands and your body and your voices as well. And so now we're going to go into the Apostles' Creed together. And so uh, let's read it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids, you know what time it is. It is announcement time. And so welcome again uh, for those who are joining us for the very first time or for those who have been joining us for many, many times. Uh, we're so glad to have uh, you guys come and worship with us uh, through this service. And our next announcement, it is uh, we are on a small group break, right, for the summer. And I hope Kingdom Kids, you guys are enjoying your summertime. And uh, we have still small group materials and family activity materials available on our website at www.srcc.tv. So just click on there and so you can still have uh, family time and small groups with your family instead of with your actual small group because we're on a break right now. And because we're on a break, our next announcement is that we are continuing to have large groups. Uh, so all the girls with me, Pastor Grace, and all the boys with Pastor June. And uh, it is every Sunday at 11 a.m. What time? 11 a.m. And so Kingdom Kids, I hope you can all join us. And so far for the couple of weeks, it's been really good. I've been having fun at least. I hope you guys have been having fun as well well. And our next announcement is August 9th. It is promotion week, which means it is the last week with our third graders because they will be moving up to LM456. And so please keep that in mind that August 9th, it is the last Sunday uh, with our beloved, awesome third graders before they go up. And August 16th, it will be uh, when our incoming first graders will come to LM123. So keep that in mind. And uh, VBS, we just finished VBS this past week, uh, yesterday in fact, right? How was it, Kingdom Kids? I hope you guys had a great time uh, worshiping. Do you guys remember some of the things, Bible points, right? That, do you guys remember? Yes, I hope you do remember that Jesus, you know, his power helps us to what? Be good friends, it helps us to be bold, and so many things, right? And next announcement, it is, uh, we are always collecting special compassion offering for our friend Esther Kello. And I want to thank you, Kingdom, Ki Kingdom Kids, because a lot of you guys have been, uh, you know, asking your parents to contact me and actually giving a uh, offering, special offering for Esther. And so uh, thank you guys for that. And please don't forget to pray for our friend Esther because she needs your prayers. Because I always tell you, Kingdom Kids, your prayers, they are powerful. And so uh, next announcement, it is because today it is the last Sunday of the month. That means it is Memory Verse Sunday and Life App Test. And so I will give you a little bit of a quiz, right? Faith, which is our Life App word, it means trusting in blank because of... What? Because of what? Blank. What, what, do, what do you guys think it is, right? It is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. That is faith. And also our memory verse, it is John chapter 14, verses 25 to 26. So let's see if you can fill in these blanks because I know Kingdom Kids, you are so smart. So it says, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the blank whom the Father will send in my name will blank and will blank. Can you fill in those dots? I'll give you some time to think about it. Okay. So the answer is, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, right, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. 
Amen. And so now we are going to go into our offering time. So if you have offerings, please give it to your parents and your parents can uh, give offering through online. Uh, and let's prepare our hearts for worship for our offering song by singing I Will Worship You. And just like we did last week, we're going to sing it both in Korean and in English. And I'm doing this because I know that there are some parents who watch with their child. And so I thought it would be awesome to sing it in two languages. Uh, and if Kingdom Kids, you don't know Korean, it's okay. You could just sing the English version while the Korean version is being sung. So let's prepare and sing with our whole hearts. <laughs> Perfect you are. for offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time where we can worship uh, you and where we can worship with uh, our family, Lord, together with you, Lord. And we pray, thanking you, Lord, for this offering, Lord, that we are giving, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would use this money, God, to really build your kingdom, to expand your kingdom, Lord, that you would use this money to build your church and to spread the good news of Jesus everywhere, Lord. And we, Lord, just lift up an offering to our friend Esther, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would use this money to really uh, provide, God, for every need, Lord, that Esther has, Lord, and that you would bless her and her family, Lord. And Lord, we pray just for our lives as well, that you would use our lives to bring you glory, God, in all that we do. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids, you guys know what time it is. It is big picture question time. And so do you guys remember what our question is for this big picture question? It is, what did you just well, what did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Let me say that again. What did Jesus teach when he was on earth? Do you guys remember? I will give you this so you can fill out the blanks, right? Jesus taught about blank and his blank, right? He taught that all scripture is about blank. 
What could those answers be? All right, the answer is Jesus taught about God and God's kingdom, and he taught that scripture is about who? It's about Jesus. So all the scripture, it points to who Jesus is, Jesus who is our Lord and Savior and Messiah. And so now we are going to go into our favorite time, my favorite time. I hope it's also your favorite time as well. You guys are ready? On the count of three, right? You know what we do. One, two, three. It's Bible time. Yes, God's word. It is powerful. It is alive. It is true. It is real. And it's how God speaks to each and every one of us. And so it is my prayer that we would what? Open up our eyes to see and read God's word. Open up our ears to hear God's word. And open up our hearts and our minds to receive and to know and to believe in God's powerful word. And so Kingdom Kids, you guys remember what we learned about last week, right? It was about prayer. Yes. And so I'm going to do this new thing now where we are going to pray every time beforehand. And I want to challenge and encourage you, Kingdom Kids, to please Pray for yourself, right, that your heart would be open to God's word. And please pray for me that God would speak through me to give you his word today. And so let's take about just like 15 seconds to just pray that. Saying, God, please open up my heart to you and please bless Pastor Grace to speak your word. And so let's do that right now and then I'll open us up in prayer. All right, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, so much for this opportunity, Lord, to learn about you. Please open up, God, every heart of every kingdom kid that is listening right now. And I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me to give your word. So, Holy Spirit, would you take a hold of each and every one of our hearts right now, and would you guide over this time? We love you. We worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Kingdom Kids, so let's turn uh, to, before we open up our Bibles, uh, our message title for today is, What Do You Treasure? Question mark, right? What do you treasure, Kingdom Kids? Like, what do you love? What do you hold valuable? What has importance to you? What do you treasure? And so let's open up our Bibles to Luke chapter 12, verses 15 through 34. Luke chapter 12 verses 15 through 34. And is Luke in the Old Testament or New? It is, yes, you're right. It is in the New Testament. And we have been looking at Luke, the book of Luke, for the past few weeks too. So hopefully, Kingdom Kids, you will find it very quickly. I will give you a few more seconds. All right. And so I wanted to start off by saying, uh, Kingdom Kids... I miss you all, and I am praying for you all as well. And so I wanted to start by saying, you are blessed. You are blessed. And if you are with a family member right now, I want you guys to look at each other and say to one another, you are blessed. Mom or sister or dad or whoever, brother, right? Or if you're by yourself, say, I am blessed. I am blessed. And I wanted to share this because I want us to realize uh, just how blessed, how fortunate we are uh, for all that God has given us. If you have clothes on your body, then you are blessed. You are fortunate, right? If you have a bed to sleep on or a home to live under or food to eat anytime you want, uh, or a family and, and friends that love you, then consider yourself blessed because God has given you so much. And um, yeah, to remember that and to not take that for granted. And so I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. And the first question is, do you have a lot of possessions? And so what does possessions mean? Possessions mean, do you have a lot of like things that you own? Uh, Raise your hand if you do. I'm pretty sure There are a good handful of us that would say, yeah, I I own a lot of stuff, Pastor Grace. Okay, then the second question I wanted to ask you then is what are some of your favorite things that you own then? Can you think of some things? 
What are some of the favorite possessions, some of the favorite things that you own? I know for our large groups, uh, we shared and we had a show and tell where we shared some stuff that uh, we really loved, whether it was a necklace that, or a bracelet that our grandma gave us or an awesome cool painting or drawing that we had or stuffed animals. And so those were some of the things that, you know, that you Kingdom Kids shared yourself of what you thought uh, that were your favorite things. And so the third question then I wanted to ask you then is what are some things that you want? Can you think of some things that you want? You guys probably have a list. Like, I want this toy. I want this game. I want this, I don't know, like junk food or food or whatever, right? And, you know, when I was a little kid, I always wanted, uh, I don't know what this is called, but, you know, like the little cars that the kids drove. I always wanted that when I was little, but I never got it. And when I was about your age, Kingdom Kids, I wanted a scooter, a razor. I don't know if that was popular, if it's still popular now, probably is. But I really wanted that back then, and um, I think it was like my 10th birthday, and my parents uh, bought it for me for my birthday. And so uh, Kingdom Kids, there are probably a lot of things that you could think of right now, too, on the top of your head of things that you want, right? There's always something that I want that's cool or new or that other people have. And, um, yeah, we always want, want, want. Uh, and it kind of reminds me, right, of this parable that Jesus talked about uh, in Luke chapter 12. And so someone came to Jesus, some man came to Jesus, and he told Jesus, he said, Jesus, can you tell my brother to share the things, his inheritance that he owns with me? And you know what, Jesus, how Jesus responded? So when you open up your Bible, let's look at chapter 12, verses 15. Jesus responds by saying, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Life does not consist of in an abundance of possessions. So what Jesus, he's saying, Kingdom Kids, is that life isn't, it isn't about getting more things in life. It's not about getting more things about like the coolest toys or the games. Life isn't about that, right? Life is not found in what you own, what you possess, what you have. But true life, it is about knowing who God is. That's what true life is. And so uh, Jesus told this parable, and do you guys remember Kingdom Kids? What does a parable, what is a parable? A parable is a story about God's kingdom. And so let's continue then to read in verses 16 to 21. And so let's read it on the count of three. One, two, three. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. Verse 19, it says, And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is, this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Amen. And so Kingdom Kids, I want us to stop and think because I have many questions to ask you because I love asking you questions because I want you guys to think because I know that you guys are so smart. And so think about what you're reading, right? So the first question is, what did the, what did the rich man have? He had a lot of crops, right? He said he had an abundance of harvest, the Bible tells us. And so the second question is, what did he decide to do then with all the possession, all the crops and harvest that he had? What, did the, what does the Bible tell us that he did? He said he had an idea, right? He said that because uh, the, the barn that he already had, it wasn't big enough to store all the things that he gained, he decided, I am going to build a bigger one. I'm going to tear down my old barn and I'm going to build a bigger one so that I could put all of the extra abundant things, crops I have, and I'm going to store it in this bigger new barn. Next question then is, what happened to the man, right? As he was building, what happened to the man? The Bible tells us, right, that the man 
that God said that the man was what? He called him a fool, saying, you are foolish, right? He was only focused on what he could see, which was what he had. And he didn't, he only focused on that. And so what happened to him? The Bible tells us is that he died that very night. He died that very night. And where, the next question is then, where was the man's treasure in? Where was his treasure in? His treasure was in his things, right? His treasure was about the crops, the many crops that he had. And his treasure was about in eating and drinking and relaxing and having fun. His treasure, it wasn't in uh, God or the riches of God, but it was just in his own things, his own selfish things. And so the next question then is, what does it mean to be rich towards God then? What does it mean, Kingdom Kids, to be rich towards God? In verse 21, being rich towards God, right, it means counting God as greater than anything else. It means, being, it means using your possessions, the things that you own for God and for others. It's to use all that you have, all the things for God and for others. That's what it means to be rich towards God. And so this is what this man, he fell short of. And Kingdom Kids, you know, we only have one life to live. And we must live it well. We must live it well for God and with God. And, you know, someday all of us are going to not be in this world anymore, meaning one day we will all die because that is a part of life. And do you know that when we do die, that we can't take any of the things that we own here with us when we die? That we have to leave it all behind. And so what Jesus he is saying is that we should live, right, to glorify God. Not to uh, get more things in this life. But we should live in a way where it's about treasuring God and giving, uh, you know, the things that we own, our possessions for God and, and for others as well. And so our first point then for today, it is life is not about getting more things in this life. Your life, it's not about getting more things like cooler toys or games or whatever it may be, but your life it is about knowing God and about showing God. That is what our lives should be about. And Kingdom Kids, I want to tell you that, you know, the world is going to lie to you and the world is going to tell you that, no, that you need more things. You need uh, newer things. You need better things. And they're gonna, the world's going to keep telling you, you need all these things. But that's not true, Kingdom Kids. You don't need more things in your life. What you need more of is Jesus. Uh, you need Jesus himself. And so, um, yes, we only have one life to live. And it's my prayer as your pastor that we would live it well for God and with God. And so Jesus, we see that he talks about uh, this one type of man, right, who is rich and has a lot. And he uses it on himself and he wastes his life. And Jesus, he also talks about a different kind of uh, life and different kind of person. And so Kingdom Kids, before we go into it, I wanted to ask you, uh, do you ever worry? Like, do you have any worries? I, I do, right? And raise your hand if you have any worries, right? Uh, what are some of the things that you worry about? Can you think of things? And if you're with a family member, you could share it with them. What are the things that you worry about? Uh, you know, even for myself too, me, Pastor Grace, I worry sometimes. And even right now in our current uh, time, right, in this world with COVID-19 coronavirus, uh, there are a lot of people that are worried, right? Uh, we might worry about, oh, when, it, when am I going to go back to church? Or when am I going to go back to school and see my friends? And some of us worry about our health too or about uh, our families or our parents um, and even with their jaws, right? There are a lot of things that we could be worrying about. But can I tell you something? Kingdom kids, do you think that Jesus knows that his disciples worry? What is your answer? Yes, right? Uh, Jesus knows that his disciples worry. And so uh, I wanted to ask, how, does, how do you think Jesus knows? How does Jesus know that his disciples worry? It's because who is Jesus? 
Jesus is who? Jesus, he is the son of God. He is God. He is Messiah. He knows all things. And so if he knows that his disciples back then worried about things in life, then he knows all of our worries too. And he knows all of our needs. And so Jesus, he talks about people who are worried and he addresses it, right, in verses 22 to 34. So let's read it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Then Jesus said to his disciples, uh, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body or what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. In verse 25, it says, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. Verse 28, If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not, see, and do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all uh, such things, and your father knows that you need them. Verse 31, but seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. That was a lot to read, right? But I want us to take that into mind and I want us to stop and think, right? How many times does Jesus say to not worry, right? He says it, when you look at the Bible, can you read through the passages? How many times does he say it? I'll give you a few seconds to find it and count. Right? He says it. He says, do not worry. And he actually says, do not be afraid too on top of that. And I wondered, why did Jesus say, uh, do not worry? It's because there were probably people like his disciples, right, who had to worry about, oh, how am I going to uh, feed myself or feed my family the next meal? Or what am I going to wear? I have no clothes. And so Jesus, he knew all those things because Jesus is who? He is God. He is the son of God. And so he was bringing comfort to them, saying, don't worry about these things. And he says, and I wanted to ask him, are you more important than birds, kingdom kids? Do you think you're more important and of more value than birds that are in the air? Yes, I hope you said yes. And then I want to ask you, are you more important than flowers that you see outside? Yes, I hope you answered yes. The Bible tells us, right, Jesus tells us that we are more important than the birds in the air and even the flowers that you see outside because God sees us and views us as more important, right? That we, that you and I, King and Kids, that we are his most prized and most special uh, cre- uh, creatures, right? That God, he calls us valuable and he says that we are more important. If God feeds the birds in the air and he makes beautiful flowers, how much more does he care for you and me and for his children, right? He cares for, for us infinitely so much more than the birds in the air and the flowers, right? And we must remember, Kingdom Kids, that we are whose children? We are God's children. We are God's sons and daughters made in whose image? God's image. Therefore, because we are made in his image and because he loves us, we can trust him to provide for all of our needs. He knows all of our needs and he cares for us because he loves us. And so Jesus, he's telling us to seek his kingdom and all of the needs that that we might be worrying about, God says he will provide it for us when we seek his kingdom. And so I wanted to uh, ask then, 
Our second point is, do not worry about your life because God cares for you. I'm going to say that again. Do not worry about your life because God cares for you. And so, but what does it mean, Kingdom Kids, to seek God's kingdom? What do you think that means? Seeking God's kingdom, it means to live in a way that puts God first, right? It means to think about what does God want and how do we know what God wants? God, we know what God wants when we read God's word. And so seeking God's kingdom, it means living in a way that puts God's for, God first and his plans first. And we can do that by what? By sharing the good news, the gospel to those around us. And we can do that by using our talents and gifts that God has given us. And even the things that he has given us, the possessions that he has given us for God, right? To spread God's good news, to spread God's love to those around us. And so point number three, let's read it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Three, seek God's kingdom and trust him to provide for our needs. Seek God's kingdom and trust him to provide for our needs. And so for those who don't believe in Jesus, they don't realize uh, this truth that God provides for their needs because they only think about, oh, how can I gain more stuff and more possessions. But as believers, as Christians, right, we know that it's not, life isn't about gaining more things, right, but life is about what? Knowing God and showing God. And it's about seeking God's kingdom and putting his plans first and how to spread God's love and truth all around. So Kingdom Kids, I wanted to ask, does God provide us with the things that we need? Yes. Second question then is, does God, does God provide us with the things that we want? Sometimes, right? But it's important to notice and to realize that Jesus, he doesn't promise that God will give us everything that we want because God, he is loving and he is righteous, meaning he knows what is best. And he doesn't give us every single thing that we want because sometimes the things that we want aren't always good things or they're not the best things for us and so we must try uh we must trust in god right because he knows what is best and the best it is found in who it's found it's found in himself jesus knows that he is the best and so he gives us himself and so more than the things of this world god wants us to treasure jesus and so that leads me to our fourth and last point right Let's read it all together on the count of three. One, two, three. Treasure Jesus as your greatest treasure and reward. Treasure Jesus as our greatest treasure and reward. And we treasure, when we treasure Jesus, that's when we can realize and give freely to those around us and not think about, oh, what can I gain and what more things can I buy or gain right, or have? And so when we understand that when Jesus is the greatest treasure, we understand that we can live without the things that uh, we think that, are, that we need, right? Or that we want or that are important to us. But when we treasure Jesus, uh, it changes us uh, to see uh, Jesus as the most important thing in our lives. And so what's the big deal, right? Why should we treasure Jesus? Why should we hold Jesus as valuable and see him as worthy, right? Of uh, saying, God, saying, Jesus, you are the most important thing in our lives. Why? Well, kingdom kids, when Jesus, he looks at you, he thinks, um, he sees you as worth it and he sees you as uh, a value and he shows his love for you. And how does he show his love for you? He shows the greatest, he shows the greatest example of love by dying on the cross for whose sins? For our sins. And so it's not that we loved Jesus or treasured or hold Jesus of value and worth first, but is that Jesus, he first loved us and he shows us the greatest example by dying on the cross for us so that we may have life, so that we may have, so that we may have a relationship with God and to be made right, be forgiven of our sins and to walk with him, right? To be in fellowship with him. 
And so, Kingdom Kids, uh, it is my prayer that you would be ones that would really treasure, would really love Jesus with all your heart, with all that you have, right? And that you would see him as worthy, that you would love him and that you would live for him. And so, Jesus, uh, in our last verse that we read, right, it says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be, right, in verse 34. Where your treasure is, is where your uh, where your heart will be also. And what does that mean, Kingdom Kids? I want to ask you, what do you love and value the most? Uh, where that, because what you value and love the most, that's where your heart is. Um, who do you love the most, right? Where do you spend the most time uh, doing? And because the things that you spend the most time in, that's what you, your heart goes out to, and that's what you love the most, basically. And so I want to challenge you and encourage you, Kingdom Kids, to treasure Jesus. And so application, right, is how can we apply God's word to our lives? As we have read in this passage, what does the story tell us about who God is and about the gospel? And what can you, Kingdom Kids, learn from this? Uh, one way that we can apply what we have learned is to pray, right? Pray. As I have uh, just said is, where is your treasure kingdom, kids? And who is your treasure? Who do you love the most? Who do you value the most? And I pray that it would be Jesus. And so one way we can apply God's word is to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your friends and your family. Pray for uh, the church and all believers that as believers and as uh, children of God that all of us, we would come together and that we would see Jesus' true value, true worth as one who is worthy of our worship, one who is our treasure and our reward, and that we would respond back in, in love and in praise and worship to him. And so uh, four points then to remember. The first one, it is your life is not about getting more things in this life, but your life is about what? It is about knowing God and showing God. And number two, do not worry about your life because God cares for you. And number three, point three, is seek, God, seek God's kingdom and trust him to provide for your needs. And last but not least, treasure Jesus as your greatest treasure and reward. Let's pray now. Uh, let's close our eyes, put our hands together, and I'll pray for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time where we get to learn, God, about uh, your words, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that your word would take a deep root uh, in our hearts, that we would plant the seeds of, of your truth in our lives and that you would bear fruit in us, Lord. Help us to remember, God, that our lives are not about getting more things or uh, about ourselves, but our lives are about knowing you, God, and showing you. Help us to trust in you, uh, Lord, and to realize whether we have a lot or whether we have a little, Lord. Help us to know that you love us, that you care for us, that you provide, God, for every need that we have. And help us, Lord, to always first seek, God, your kingdom, Lord, and to trust in you that you will give us all that we need. And God, we pray, Lord, that we would be, uh, God, your sons and daughters, Lord, that treasure you, Jesus, that see your worth and uh, see value in you, and that we would respond in worship, saying, Jesus, you are worthy of worship, you are worthy of praise, that you are worthy, God, of our lives. Help us to live for you each and every day. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so let's end in the Lord's Prayer. And uh, let's say this all together slowly, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever. Amen. All right, Kingdom Kids, it is family activity time. And so our first family activity is called Design It. 
design it. And so uh, I just encourage you, right, uh, to just get a sheet of paper and pens and something to color with and just design with your family something like a piece of clothing, like so on a sheet of paper, right, just draw like a shirt and, uh, and then design it and just share it with one another. And so boys too, I, you know, you design a jersey or some kind of, I don't know, sport thingy mabobber. And uh, number two is wants and needs. And so uh, just make a list of things. A uh, suggested list is like clothing, healthy food, junk food, new toys, pets, school supplies, clean water. And you're going to uh, be in a room, right? You're going to put things that you need and things that you want. And as you go over a list of things that you just kind of just jog and write, I want to encourage you to go through each thing and say, oh, is this something, is clean, some, clean water something that I need or is that something that I want? And explain that and share your reasons why. And the last family activity, it is called bubble blessing bubble blessing. And so uh, as we, you know, as I shared in the beginning, right, is that Kingdom Kids, you and I, all of us, we are so blessed. And so if you have bubbles with you, just take a turn of blowing the bubbles and just share with your family members things that uh, you are blessed by, things that you are grateful for that God has blessed you with, whether that is um, your loving parents or uh, your toys or games or whatever it may be, uh, just go around taking turns and sharing uh, what are some things that uh, God has blessed you with. All right, I hope you guys have a great uh, family activity time together. And so we're going to end now in a benediction, which is a prayer of blessing by Pastor Jeremy. And so let's close our eyes, stick out our hands, and receive this prayer of blessing. Let's pray. Dear God, and thank you so much for today and worship. And thank you so much for calling us to worship you. And thank you the word you gave us today and engrave us so we can remember the word and live out the word. And thank you so much for the last VBS and let us have wisdom and uh, give a power to memorize all the word in our heart so we can live by the word. Lord, we give all the glory to you. And thank you so much. We love you. And we worship you. We follow you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of our Father God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you forevermore. Amen.